Well, it's a beautiful day here in Chaco, and I am in my outside studio. Love it here. Sun shining, sparse cloud cover, cool. Love it. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day, and I've been interviewing for this uh, channel some very interesting people. But I had somebody the other day say, Jim, um, you're living with a pretty interesting person. And I started thinking about it, and they were right. So, today, I want to introduce you to somebody who's very special to me. She happens to be the grandmother of my grandchildren. And uh, we've been together now for a little over 60 years. She's wife, mother, grandmother, artist extraordinary, counselor, teacher, lecturer, movie actress, and as of last month at age 82, <laughs> skydiver. So we're gonna go in in a few minutes into her studio here in downtown Chaco. And we're going to see some of the stuff that she's been doing over the past 60 years. Maybe some even before that. She only has dealt in multiple, multiple mediums. And we'll, we'll talk about those when we get in there. But I think you'll be interested in what she has to say. So without any further ado, we're going to go in to the studio of Helen Perry Thickens Ritchie and meet her. I think you'll I think you'll enjoy it. Well, I usually start out by welcoming people to your studio in Chaco, Mississippi. Um, but I see no reason to do that now since you live almost half of your life out here. That's true. So, so we're in your digs now and we're getting ready to take a look at what you've done through a lot of years back. But I want to introduce everybody. This is my bride of 60 some odd years, Helen Perry Thickens Ritchie from Laurel, Mississippi. And we can start right out from Laurel, Mississippi. That's where you're from, right? That's correct. Okay. Speak up. Yeah, I'm not going to bite. I <laughs> promise you. I, I am prone to sleep, sleep, speak softly. Well, <laughs> most of the time. Most of the time. Um, okay. <laughs> High school in Laurel. Right. Then the first year, MSCW. After that, Mississippi State College for Women, in case you folks are out of the state and don't understand who that was, who now is Mississippi University for Women. For one year there, and then on to Ole Miss, where you got real lucky. Mm -hmm. you Met you and started dating you. This is true. Okay. That, that was sort of what I had in mind. I guess I was, I guess I was lucky, too. Um, yeah. Graduated with a degree in BAE in education, Bachelor of Arts in Education. Bachelor of Arts in Education. In secondary art, not not the elementary. But when we got into the army, when we married and went in the army, you were already in, and I was I got a job in the Columbus school system, teaching art. It's Columbus, Georgia. Yeah. Right. Yes. And, and uh, first through the 12th grade, and I had four different schools where I taught art. And Grades 1 through 12 in four different schools. Correct. Okay. <laughs> that had to be an adventure. Well, I didn't know any better. <laughs> so, okay. Then that's where our firstborn was born, Martin yeah. Army Hospital, that's Fort right. Benning, Georgia. That's right. right. You had a sort of a little problem there, too, didn't you? I sure did. I had eclampsia. And we both died, almost died. In, uh, but we both recovered and are doing wonderfully well. Just for you all who, don't, who are not medically uh, uh, inclined to know these things, uh, eclampsia in those days was 80% fatal. And so there was a tough time getting her and the baby to breathe. That's right. But... After four years, I'm four years, four days, it seemed like 40 years. It was 12 four, years, 12, 12 days, 12 in, days yeah. in intensive care mm -hmm. in the hospital. Yeah. They both pulled through. 
thanks be to God. Yeah. Um, okay, and then from there, we, uh, oh, we left out one small thing at Ole Miss. Yeah. You, you happened to bring your horse up there. I certainly know? did, yes. <laughs> Unbeknownst to your father. My father did not know. <laughs> <laughs> So when when the proposal of marriage was was offered to her, I said, "Look, um, a second lieutenant makes two hundred and twenty-two dollars a month. Um, so I cannot afford a horse when we get married. So you've got to make a choice between the horse and me." Mm -hmm. And you hesitated long enough to make me nervous, but finally did choose me. Thank goodness. So, exactly. but the horse didn't go to Fort Benning with us. No. Okay, no, so after, well, you liked the Army, too. Didn't oh, you? I really did. I wanted us to stay in. I, I liked the Army. See, it was kind of a social whirl, all the battery mm -hmm. officers' wives' club and the officers' battalion yeah. wives' club. And but I liked what you were doing there, too. Everybody wanted you to stay in. You know, you were doing a wonderful job there. You, too, you know, they wanted you to stay in, too. Well, one quick thing on that. I was in the... Uh, artillery and we stayed in the field all the time and run the first really you don't have bad. To tell that. Yeah, I'm going to tell it. <laughs> I'm gonna, I am going to tell it. I, we stayed in the field four days a week out there sweating or freezing, one of the two. And Monday morning at four o'clock we left and went to the field and we usually came in about Thursday night. So here's my new bride, who is alone Monday through Thursday, um, every week teaching school, and I, I, all I could look forward to Thursday was coming home to clean white sheets after all that sweating and freezing out there and air conditioning or heat and came in one weekend and she had been bored as she usually was all week. She said, let's do something this weekend. And I said, what is that, darling? She said, let's go camping. <laughs> and uh, that subject has not come back up in 60 some odd years. It has not. Because <laughs> the, the, that's not one of my strong suits anymore. <laughs> okay, so we come back out of the Army mm -hmm. and uh, come the IBM days. Well, you, we lived in Natchez first and then came back. That's to true. IBM. About mm -hmm. six months in Natchez mm -hmm. and then, then to Jackson with IBM. And we had Jimmy then with us. Right. Yeah. Had a one year old son with us. While we were talking about IBM days, um, while we were with IBM, we were blessed by the birth of our beautiful daughter, Ann, who entered this world a whole lot easier than her brother had. Um, but all this time, you'd been painting, you'd been teaching, mm -hmm. and you'd been, you'd been taking lessons, too. You must have taken lessons from 50 people. Well, that was since we moved to Jackson. Yeah, I really have. I've taken wonderful lessons from all different. Uh, I've studied with Marie Hall for years, and uh, John Gaddis is the one who taught me watercolor, and many, many other people. And uh, uh, Charles Reed and Edgar Whitney, and I did a portrait painting uh, workshop with Daniel Green and Jackson, and we ha we'll show you the picture of the model later. But uh, love taking lessons and one of the things with taking the lessons is that you network with people you might learn one thing that you didn't know but you're networking with all these other artists from out of state or in state so it's wonderful to get to know other people i love it i love to learn okay well you, you talked about taking watercolor from john mm -hmm. but what mediums do you work in well i work in oil, watercolor, uh, pencil, ink, acrylic, pastels, and most all the mediums that are old-timey. I don't know the new stuff that's going on now. Pencil. Pencil. I love to draw. Pen, pen and ink. Love to draw and love to work in pen and ink, yeah. So just those things, uh, you know. You, and by the way, you did do some sculpting at one time because I've got a rhinoceros oh, on my desk. Oh, I meant to bring that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but we'll we show did. that another time. Yeah, but uh, love sculpture and pottery in college. That's the only time I did that kind of thing. Okay, so you've done an awful lot of painting yeah. since we got here. Uh, landscape, what else? Landscape, portraits. Wildlife I did for years. You loved wildlife. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I, I did a lot of wildlife and I love to go horses, paint horses, and love to do portraits and uh, love flowers and birds and, you know, just um, mother gave us, um, my two sisters and me, uh, paper and pencil and scissors and stuff. And we made our own paper dolls. We didn't have any money. So, she, you know, she just gave us things we could do. We made our own paper dolls and that's where we started. And all three of us are artists. And um, so that's been a wonderful, if you learn to draw and learn how to see things, then you can draw and you have to learn how to paint the different mediums. But each one is like, you have to learn to drive a car or how to cook and you have to learn one, two, three, four to make it happen. So you learn to draw, and it's wonderful. You can just do, you know, paint anything. So I love it, and I love oils for one reason. It's it. I can paint big things, and with acrylics, I like oils better. And it's sort of like cookie dough. <laughs> you can mix, mush it around, and you can also paint on top of it. And the watercolors I love because you have to plan ahead and leave the white paper where you want the light to be. You don't use white paint much at all in, in purists. And so I love watercolor too for certain subjects. And you, with watercolor, you can make it as bold or as pastel as you want to. A lot of people think that watercolors are just pastel and very weak looking, but you can make them as strong as you can oils or acrylics. So I love both, both mediums. Well, I might mention this too. When you talk about all the mediums and the watercolor and the weak colors and that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. I am amazed when we, for example, are going down the trace, going, going to Jackson or somewhere on the trace and you'll say, look at that tree. Do you see all those greens in that tree? And my answer is, no, I see green, and you will look over there, don't you see that that looks sort of a purplish? Well, yes, it does, or look over here like, uh, you may find 20 colors in that tree, and I just see one. So it's a matter of training, I guess. Well, uh, it is, and in, in, uh, that's one of the books I, I did was, What Am I Not Seeing? And we live our lives in what am I not seeing, you know, and... The thing is, I'm not looking at one tree, I'm looking at the whole panorama of the spring colors because that's when you have all the, you've got mustard green and lime green and all different greens, but they're in different trees, see. Well, <laughs> speaking of the book you just mentioned, um, you illustrated both of my books. I did. Mm -hmm. um, and you also illustrated um, of children's book, Virginia, show that. Uh, this is Virginia Alford's uh, book that she she called me to, to do this, and we hold it up. Oh, we yeah. we um, had a wonderful relationship because she gave me the page of the of the uh, words, and then I would pray about it, and then when I went up there, she would tell me. Uh, she said, that's exactly what I wanted on that paper. I wanted to show you one picture in here. She did not want any of her pictures in here. And what we represented in this book was her um, her love of begonias. So the begonias are throughout the book, and I'm having trouble finding her. But she was wonderful. But we had a wonderful time. This is about her grandson, and he wanted... Um, uh, this this is what I wanted to show you. This is her her hands. Can you see it cooking? But she didn't want her face in the picture. So we represented her uh, this cooking, his cookie that he was going to have. But that was about her grandson. And I loved working with her on that. And Jim's books I, were the first ones that I did. And this this is uh, the first one. And I loved working with him to a degree. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, so there are, there are you know, I, she would come in, or I would give her a little stick, fig, stick man figure type of thing to work with and ask her <laughs> to do two or three, which she would do. And then I would pick the one, she'll show you, pick any one of them, show it's a pen and ink. 
Um, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Just, okay. uh, and okay. then I've got I'm one particular. Yeah, yeah, there's one. That was a picture of the, from a photograph they took of me and my old bird dog, and he mm -hmm. was pointed at yeah. the time. So that's a good that's a good one. But that's what we would do. She would she would do that in pen and ink and. Yeah. And then this second one, this is my one yeah, of my, I love the old store, doing the old store. Yeah. I went and found old stores and things. Go ahead, Don. Um, hold this one up. This is one of my favorite things that she did with, with pen and ink. Uh, hold it up. I, I know, that, can you see that? That's, a, that's an old bass getting ready to absolutely tend to a goldfish. And that's one of the stories that we use <laughs> in that little book. But those are the kinds of things that she did just amazed me. Uh, I was so delighted with that. Okay, we can go through the rest of the books now if okay. you want to. All she right. just finished some of her own. Well, Jimmy, our son, loves photography. He's a doctor, but he loves photography. And he came and... What, you want the air go uh, He came and took pictures of my artwork, and I had done what I call my hard paintings and they uh, are paintings that God gave me to paint, and there was a whole series of them. And uh, the um, women who were at Crossroads uh, came the out. The organization here. The organization, yeah. yeah, in Canton, for women who were coming out of prison, and they would come out on Fridays, and Jim and I would counsel with them and pray with them and talk to them and listen to their stories. And we really realized that anybody could be in prison because they made the wrong choices. And so we just loved these women, and they knew they knew we loved them. But the paintings helped them talk about it and open up uh, their lives. And this one is Jimmy and, and uh, Mary Doral and I worked on this, Visions of Redemption in a Fallen World. And it's, it's a book of my hard paintings. Can you see that okay, honey? Yeah, move it up a little closer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and these paintings would uh, help them see about life. And this one is the first one I did. It's huge. It's about six feet tall. And uh, each painting has a story behind it. And let me see. This one I like, and it's it's about jealousy. This one over here, and the snake represents a two-headed snake. And uh, can you see it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it the snake first looks. I'm going to say it. Hey, baby, <laughs> come in here over here and let me take care of you, you know, and so you get into a relationship with that snake, and then he turns into a viper, and so this is jealousy, and so each painting has a story, and uh, so this book, we, ha we did to minister to people and to get out there and all, and so that, that is one that I think is really powerful. Uh, the women would say, Oh, Miss Perry, that really speaks to me. So we we loved ministering with these young women, and some of them were been in prison for twelve years. I mean, it it was really wonderful. It's a wonderful ministry. Now this one was the first one I did, and what am I not seeing? And it is it is art lessons, and I mainly did it for my for our grandkids, but it's got all kind of you know, how to do art in this one. And then this one was the last one. And I've really been blessed bringing these to fruition because they've been on my heart for about five years. And this is called The Emissary. And The Emissary is... The Emissary is a messenger sent into enemy territory knowing that he could be killed, a channel, a vessel. We who love Jesus Christ are all emissaries sent into the world. And that's this book is my paintings. Uh, can you see that okay? Yeah, show some more. Okay. 
Yeah. This, this has so many of my paintings in here. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, that's one of my favorites right yeah, there. Yeah. And it hung in my office for years. Yeah. That's a dove. It does. I'm sorry, I'm not being very professional, but... Uh, well, that's... Yeah, it, it, it is... How can I do this? <laughs> can you see it at all? No, here. Oh, here, you do it. Uh -huh, there. That's sick. Can you see that old barn? Yeah, that's a good that's a good shot. Is that what you were trying to show? Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. She did those for years. Matter of fact, when we first moved to Kenton, she went out to do an old barn in a pasture, and there was a man sleeping, leaning up against the barn. There was an old ramshackle barn in a chain chain bottom chair, and she asked him if he if she could paint his barn. And he looked up and he said, "No, ma'am, I don't believe I won't put any more money in this old barn." Yeah. So we decided she better explain what kind of painting she made. That's right. He didn't want me to paint his barn. <laughs> but this one I love is John the Baptist. And it, it's six foot something. And that host has a whole story because a friend, a, one of my art students called me and said, Miss Perry, I have a person who wants to buy John the Baptist. And he was, he, it's a beautiful painting. It's a full thing of his body and all in the desert in front of a fireplace and you know fire out there in the desert and she said they want to buy my painting I said they hadn't seen it she said no but they want to buy it I've told them about it about it and I said she said how much do you want for it and I said I don't want to say and then she said how much do you want for it how much would you I said ten thousand dollars <laughs> and she said okay I got a check in the mail for $10,000, and they had not seen the painting at all. And Jim and I took it over there, and it's hanging in a church over in Louisiana. And I called them, and I said, I want to get that painting back. And he said, no, you can't have it. <laughs> so, but Can't even buy your old painting back. No, but I love that painting, yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of painting, I think it's time to kind of get up and walk around and show, show the folks some of the... Some of the paintings that we've got, uh, um, are you motioning me for something? Yeah, did you look at that little piece of paper? Um, no. It, it's okay, no problem. We're well, let's, let's look at some of the paintings, and then we'll get back here if we need to. All right. Uh, now, this is, she was talking about being non-professional a while ago. I'm going to be doing the best I can do, so just hang with me. It's either going to work or it's not. But we're going around to start looking at some things. Now, if I if I can get my 85-year-old body out of the chair. There we go. Here we go. Where do you want to start? Just you look at stand there and I'll get the painting. Okay. This orange painting here is one of the first ones I remember her doing. We've had that one for years and years and years. And I, it's one of my favorites. I do love it. Now, this is one of her portraits. Honey, you can be talking about this. You see where I'm yeah, going. Yeah, that's uh, Mary Lane Reed, and she uh, was a uh, model for in the Daniel Green Portrait Workshop in Jackson. She's just beautiful. And the thing with painting straight from a person, you can see different colors in the face that are so wonderful that when you're working from a photograph, you can't see. But I love that. I think and people always ask me, who in the world is that? Yeah. Yeah. There's another one down here. Yeah. Bluebird. That's watercolor. Yeah. And that's a, I like that one too. This one <coughs> is <coughs> which one? This the lions. Yeah. I I paint my dreams and visions, and I keep j journals all the time. And uh, so this was a a dream, and so one person. Uh, a psychologist said that's the Father, Son, and and uh, the Holy Spirit. No, that was the pastor said that, and the psychologist said no, that's your father and your husband, and this one is you over here, the female. And uh, so it's got us. Each of the paintings have a story behind them. <clears throat> this one, can you get that one? Mm -hmm. This one I like very much. Let me pull it to you. Can you see that okay without yeah, a glare? Yeah, hard with that glass is shining. Ah, how about no, that's, that? worse. that's worse. That's <laughs> worse. 
anyway, this was a man in church. In, Put it down. Down? Yeah. Okay. This, this was a man in church, and the light from the window was just pouring on his hair. But this painting is done with two colors, orange and blue. And the white is the paper. I was talking about earlier with watercolor. You leave the white paper. But I love this one. I think that's really nice. And you have watercolors mostly over here. These are all watercolors. Oh, you see with all the lights. Yeah, it on. is. So this one. That one, the barn, you can probably see a little bit. Yeah, well, that was the one we showed a while ago. And this one, another type of the thing that she does. Yeah, that's a lot. that's done with oil pencils, and and uh, it, you can get as detailed as you want to with it. I just love the oil pencils too. They're uh, okay. so that's there, and <clears throat> this is. I'm gonna hold it up, baby. Ugh. Wait. Um. This is Ella Lewis, and I painted this in three hours. She was sitting on her porch out in the country, and one minute she'd be laughing, the next minute she'd be yelling at her grandkids, and the letter is from her son who was in the service. So we, I love this. She is just beautiful. That's oil, of course. Yeah. You good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the prints I've had made, uh, the panda was one. And this was a dream I had. Uh, and he was lying down in the grass. And you know how you kiss a baby's tummy and they, what I call chortle, they make a deep guttural laugh. And that's what he was doing. He was laughing. And this is called unconditional love. So and I that is hanging in a lot of nurseries and a lot of dormitory rooms and other places all over the country. You sold prints. What? What? That, that was an award given for that print, wasn't it? Yeah, but I don't remember what it was. Well, yeah, it was a top in the state. Yeah, and this this is another print I have have made, and it's called "Consider the Lilies of the Field." And this was given. All of these prints were given to a friend of mine who was going to seminary. So she could go through seminary. And this one uh, was commissioned by A Time to Kill. And they wanted me to do a series of watercolors so that the judge, you remember what his name was? Judge somebody. No, I don't remember. But anyway, he was up on the balcony of the Mosby home and he was painting a watercolor. And so I did the beginning of the painting and then down to the more complete, and he would be taking his brush and pretending he was painting <laughs> on the watercolor. Oh, that's great, I see. Okay, is that better? Yeah. So, so you do a series of paintings. I did, yeah. So they would show the steps that he was yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, you ready? Everybody get ready, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I was painting this, and Jim came out and said, said, I don't like that. And I just fell out laughing. This is, I'm not angry. And you can tell he is not angry. And I asked the girls from Crossroads, I said, have you ever said this to anybody else when you were screaming in their face? And have you had anybody else do that to you, screaming in your face and saying they're not angry? But the reverse of it says, you ready? All right, I'm not angry, right? Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Woo! But they are angry, right? <laughs> so that's funny. Okay. Let's see. All right, you want to talk about skydiving? Well, yeah, we can talk about your skydive. People said, how in the world could you go skydiving? And here's my reason why I was not 
afraid at all. I was asleep, and the Holy Spirit came and got me by the back of my gown and took me up into the heavenlies. And I mean, I was going faster than the speed of light up into the heavenlies. I was going past stars and galaxies and everything, just whoosh, up into the, as far as I could go. I was hanging up there in, in the black, dark, and I'm looking down on this. I'm looking down on this galaxy, and it was pure liquid and pure gold. And I'm hanging up there. And I know when I'm flying in my dreams that it's spiritual. But I painted this over a period of time. And then at two different times at conferences, uh, national people have asked me to buy this painting. And I said, you know, it's not for sale. But I, have re I had prints made of it. And then they bought the prints because I had to paint all over it again. Uh, I repainted it. But it's a wonderful, wonderful painting. Of, to me, it's a glory. It's liquid gold and liquid silver. And pure, pure, pure. And it's called the glory of God. So I love this painting. Okay. So, the skydive. The skydive was not a problem. Was not a problem. <laughs> okay. I love that skydive. It was wonderful. They were so, they would tell you what was going to happen. And I love being with Jim on his, we were celebrating his 85th birthday to go skydiving. Wait, I got to tell you two more pictures. Oh, okay. Yeah. Come over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a story behind it. Yeah. Yeah. This was a vision as I woke up one morning of a lady, black hair, black shawl, black dress, black boots on a black horse. And it was just as I woke up in the morning. And so I called my friend Katie, who looked just like this lady. And she came over and put on those clothes and got on my black horse. And I took pictures of her. And when she was getting ready to leave, I said, well, let me just get your face. So I did her face in watercolor over here, honey. Yeah, just did her face in watercolor. And so she left, and I was painting this painting in oil, and that painting fell over in my art, in my water, in my um, oil paint. And um, so I just scraped the blobs off. And when I got through, I just made flowers out of them. <laughs> and then I took doilies and with watercolor and made the lace look. But it's like making lemonade out of lemons because I saved the painting yep. by scraping off the paint. So, but I love this painting too. And a friend of ours saw it and she said, that's me. She knew the personality of this lady and she wrote a short story for me about it. <clears throat> enough? Okay. Still want to see the rainbow? Whatever you want. Oh, we still going? Okay. All right. This I saw on I-55 coming back from Jackson, and the rainbow landed in I-55, and I had the painting, that painting up there of the same thing, if you can see it. Uh, at an art show, and they came and said, did you see the gold ball? So they had seen them too. Nobody wanted to leave the rainbow, so the, the cars had backed up about a half a mile back up on I-55 and made another lane on the 18-wheelers over where the trucks are. And uh, it landed in I-55, and there was this gold dome where it hit the highway. It just stayed there and stayed there. And then when we started through the gold dome, there was a big area, I call it a room, of brilliant white light. And you drove through into the white light, and the gold balls were floating around in the white light. 
but I know a lot of people saw that that day. You know, experienced the same thing. It was beautiful. And this is the last one. But this is Jesus in where I experienced, I go down into what I call the cave of my heart. And I went down into the cave of my heart and Jesus was there and he had, he was very quiet and he just looked at me and then he reached under the stairs where there were gold nuggets and he just kept looking at me and reached in there and handed me gold nuggets and he would hand me more and more and more gold nuggets and then he was very quiet didn't say a word and then he reached in there and got more and more and more gold nuggets and handed them to me and this was just so special what did that signify it signifies when you're with someone and you're really relating and you're feeling the presence of God or maybe you don't feel the presence of God, but you know that what they're saying and you're saying, you're communicating in a way that is like a gold nugget. It's a treasure and a gift from God. You know, those are very special moments. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's all of the paintings. Okay. That, yeah. that is a sample of hundreds of paintings that she's got in her wow. other, other side of the studio. Yeah. Um, this is true. Well, and she's doing one gigantic one that she's been working on for months now. Yeah, and, so, and I'm in the middle of doing some portraits too again. That's right. I forgot so, about yeah. that. You so, are. You're doing about yeah. three, three portraits right now. Well, they're actually five of one family. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been fun. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, this has you, been you, fun. You snickered a while ago when you were talking about movie actors. What? But you were you well you had a you know you, you had a, did you have a speaking part in uh, Time to Kill? Yes, I did. Did you get paid for it? Yes, I am still getting you, paid. You're for it. still getting royalty checks. <laughs> yes, I am. Then evidently you are a movie actress, right? <laughs> yes, brother, I really am. <laughs> okay. That was that was a interesting situation. We kept thinking they were going to say April April Fool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, well, this has been fun. You uh, we're gonna do a little surprise here. <laughs> oh, oh yes, indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I was. I was gonna. This is uh, the way I look sometimes, and other times I look like this. <laughs> oh well, let me say this first. You have to have a husband who loves you so much for yourself that he does not love you for what you look like. And so my husband has just been wonderful to just love me through and through, no matter what. All right, here we go. You ready? <laughs> I came down with alopecia about 2016, and this is 2022. So I decided I am not my hair. And so I, go, I wear caps, I wear wigs, I go into the stores with nothing. And I just, the thing is, is that I can't see myself. So when I'm looking at you, I can't see myself. <laughs> you can see me, but I can't see me. So there's no intimidation and no embarrassment. So it's just the way God made me, and I'm thankful to be here. It takes you a lot less time to get ready to go somewhere, too. I can yes, tell you that. So that's one yes, asset for sure. Yes, <laughs> and, and the bills from the beauty parlor yeah. are considerably yeah. less. Yeah. Well, can I share my little prayer? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. This is a prayer that the Lord gave me for my husband and me in 1985. And it has helped many people who are in situations that they want to be more loving. And my prayer was, Lord, we do not know how to pray. You have said to us, love one another. And we do not know how to love one another. And you have said to show, to pray for and show uh, good to our enemies. And we don't know how to do that. So the prayer is, Lord, we do not know how to love. Father God, be our love for one another. Your love is holy and pure. 
and you love us through and through. Be our love for one another. And you just sort of see a figure eight of the infinity with his love in the middle of relationship. And let us look through your eyes, Lord. We see judgment and criticize others. And Lord, you see us through the blood of Jesus, your son, who has come into the world to bless us with, with eternal life in relationship with you. And that's my prayer for everybody, for all people. And it, it has helped many marriages to pray this prayer, to ask God to be loved for each other and to look through his eyes. And I love that prayer. So here we are. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, the check will be in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> All right, John. Thank you very much. And we're going to end this little set to you right now. So we hope you enjoyed it. Um, and that is, that'll give you some idea of the things that are in the studio in downtown Chaco, Mississippi. We'll see you next week. And supposedly, if things go to schedule, I will have as my guest here in the studio one guy, Hovis. H-O-V-I-S, in case you don't know how to spell it. Google him. You'll be surprised. You've, you've seen him before. Yeah. Good man. That's and a long time, long time friend of both of ours. Yeah. And we will see you Thank next you. week. I'm Jim Ritchie. <laughs> Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Bye. Uh, this drawing that I use as my logo is one of my favorite things she's done. She did it in about two hours with a ballpoint pen. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs>